Hey students, welcome to our next content video and we're going to talk about the cross product today. Here's our definition of the cross product and you're like, oh man, right? <laughs> As you're writing this down, um, the most important thing here besides the formula, and honestly this formula isn't that important because I'm going to show you a more organized way to find the cross product, is unlike the dot product, which is a value, the cross product is another vector. So you can see I have component one, component two, and component three. And each one of the components is a difference of some products, right? Difference of some products. Now I'm gonna do a little rewrite of that middle component. Take a moment to convince yourself that I've written the same thing there. Again, unlike the dot product, which is a scalar, a number, the cross product is a vector, another vector. And while the dot product deals with the parallelness, like how it gives you us a number to indicate how parallel two vectors are to one another, the cross product is a vector that is perpendicular to both A and B. So if you notice down here this drawing, Right. given vector A and vector B with the angle between them, the cross product is another vector. Vector A cross B. That vector is purple and it is perpendicular to both A and B. Right, A and B are linearly independent. Right, they are two different, uh, you know, two different lines. They do, there is a plane between them. And then this is the magnitude Right? And again, sometimes magnitude is written with double bars, sometimes with a single, almost absolute value looking bars. The magnitude of A cross B, that is a number. A cross B is a vector. Magnitude of A cross B is a scalar or a number. So calculating the cross product, we're going to use some Algebra 2 to the rescue. In Algebra 2, you should have studied some matrices and you should have done determinants and hopefully your teacher made you do some 2 by 2 and 3 by 2 determinants by hand, even though the calculator can do them very quickly. The second order determinants, right? How to find a determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix. Remember, if you have a 2 by 2 matrix, A, B, C, D, the determinant, which also looks like absolute value bars, is the difference of some products. Dun, 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 dun. Right? The product of the main diagonal minus the product of the minor diagonal. So a three, finding the determinant of a three by three matrix is that definition I gave you, but that definition I gave you, you can get by thinking of A multiplied by this two by two matrix, uh, the determinant, the second order determinant, B Minus, remember that rearrange I did, right? Minus this second order determinant. And then A3 times that second order determinant. That's how you find the calculate the um, three by a uh, determinant of a three by three matrix. How I'm going to use this for a cross product is I'm going to replace that first row a one a two a three with i j and k. Can you see what I've done there? A one i minus A2, 
minus j. A3 is my k. So A cross B, this is the formula on the previous slide. There you go, right? Just with my i, j, and k in it, which of course I don't have to write i, j, and k, right? I could just write like you had on that other slide, I could just write the i component, the j component, and the k component. Right? Crazy. So we will practice, in your homework, sometimes you are just asked to calculate, practice calculating the cross product. And remember, every time you're due, you getting, you're getting a vector. And it is a vector that is perpendicular to the two vectors that you crossed. Now let's talk about the magnitude of a cross product. So the magnitude of a cross product is a number. And that number is going to talk to me about how perpendicular or how strong the perpendicular pull is. Right? And if when I look at and when I want you to compare this and think about when we use the dot product number to talk about how parallel two vectors were, or when I gave you that work example, how one vector was working in the same direction as the other vector. Remember the dot product definition was magnitude times magnitude of one times magnitude of other times the cosine of the angle between them. Well, now the magnitude of the cross product, which is a number, is equal to the product of the magnitude of either one times the sine of the angle in between. So I want you to think of, th that's like a, a, a door or a, um, or a plank or something like that. And think of it as one vector. And here's another vector, right? Another vector, and that vector is, they are perpendicular, right? So imagine that this is like a door with a hinge. And if I push completely perpendicular, right? Isn't the sine of 90 degrees or pi over two, isn't that one? And so the magnitude of a cross product would just be the product of the two magnitudes. But if I pushed, right, let's say there I am, and I am pushing right like that. That angle is smaller than 90 degrees and the, right, the sine of something smaller than 90 degrees is going to be less than one and multiplying this product, right, of two magnitudes by a number less than one is going to make it smaller. So less perpendicularity-ness. <laughs> Right? And of course, if you're completely parallel, right? If you're completely parallel, right? What is the sine of um, zero or the sine of 180? Not only is that less than one, that's zero, the magnitude of the cross product is going to be zero, right? So you have no perpendicularness if both of your, if two of your, both of your vectors are parallel, right? So two non-zero -ve non vectors are parallel if the cross product is zero or if the magnitude of the cross product is zero. That would be the same thing, right? So what it means is that you've got two vectors that are parallel. And remember, two parallel vectors could actually be two vectors that lie. One is going in the positive direction and one is going in the negative direction, right? Maybe from, from a point or they are just scalar multiples of one another. In other words, they're not linearly independent. I guess that's the same thing, right? For the one that goes in the opposite direction, it's just a negative scalar. Crazy. Now let's look at a little bit of geometry. My favorite subject, not, no, just high school geometry. All right, look at the parallelogram. Now I alluded to this in our first cross product uh, diagram. 
Remember, the cross product itself is a vector that is parallel to both of them. That's the vector. But the magnitude of the cross product is actually <gasps> the area of the parallelogram. What? What is the area formula? Right? Base times height. Well, look, the base is the magnitude of vector A, and what is the height? You know what that is, just with triangle trig, right? Triangle trig says the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Therefore, H is the magnitude of B sine theta. That's right there. But hey, drop the parentheses and look what you have, the magnitude of the cross product. Gasp, remember that, remember the magnitude of the cross product is a number. The magnitude of this vector, A cross B, is the area of the tri of the parallelogram created with vectors A and B. OMG. All right, now let's move into three space. In three space, we have a number called a scalar triple product. Scalar triple product is a number, and that's three vectors, right? Three vectors in 3D space. Check that out. Now remember, you're still gonna get a number out of this, right? The result of a dot product is a number. A three, the result of a three by three determinant is a number. But look, that is just the dip, right? I did this already. I wrote this out for you in the previous slide or slides ago. But that is just the dot product. Right now, the Order of operations said you have to do the cross of B cross C first and then dot, dot with A. But then you're just calculating the determinant of the three by three matrix of the three vectors. What? We'll do this in class. You can write it down and try it if you want before class, but that's what we're gonna do in class. Three vectors are in the same plane if their scalar triple product is zero. Right? If their dot product is zero, the dot product of a vector and its cross product, though, and think about that, that kind of blows my mind a little bit. Right? Their coplanar, if their scalar triple product is zero, now how could their scalar triple product be zero? Right? Well, if their cross product is zero, that could happen. Right? So you're kind of thinking of, well, they, if all three of these vectors are in the same plane, it must be then that there is, right, this vector, B cross, right, the, the um, cross product of B cross B, B, <laughs> B cross C, excuse me, is a vector that is perpendicular. But when you dot that with A, you're going to get zero. Hmm. Hmm. Now, a geometric look at the magnitude of a scalar triple product isn't the area. What do you think it is? So the magnitude of the scalar triple is volume. Now remember here, don't get this, don't think magnitude. The dot product is already a number. This is literally the absolute value, right? I just don't want, I'm dealing with volume. So with volume, I don't want any negatives. So there's a three-dimensional parallelogram or a parallel pipette. I don't know how to really say that. So there's the area of the, 
right? Volume is just area times height. So what do we have here? The area of the base, the parallelogram is right here. And this is the height. The height of the parallelogram or this three dimensional, the parallel pipette. And here's the height, right angle. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the height, when the adjacent is the height, right? So the height is That's what I have here, area times height, drop the parentheses, and look what I have. Remember this vector right here, this vector is u cross v, right? The vector that is parallel to both u and v, I'm sorry, perpendicular to both u and v. Right, so the magnitude of the cross product, product, magnitude of a vector times magnitude of a vector times the cosine in between, right? This vector and W and in between right? That's a dot product. Magnitude, magnitude, cosine is a dot product. And it's a dot product of the two vectors. The cross product vector and the W vector. Crazy, whack, funky. And that is, right, the magnitude of the scalar triple product. Woot. We'll do this example in class if you want to write it down. You don't have to do it now, but we will go over that one in class and some homework problems. I will see you then.